If you want to do some promotion for Charlotte, then you need to go and follow her illustrations because they're amazing. Here she comes. Hopefully. Be afternoon. Hello, lovely. I just heard what you said. Yes, Charlotte's illustrations are amazing. Amazing. Go Thank find her. Go follow her. Go you've, find her. You've set her off now, but. <laughs> <laughs> But no, thank you for coming to the other side. I don't know what's going on with Instagram. It's given up. <laughs> I know. These things are sent to try us, my love. These things are sent to try us. They are, but we're getting there. We're powering through. But thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's glorious to have you. And for lots of questions. And there might be more coming in. From, I know quite a few of the comments. Charlotte. Amazing. Laura's here. Yeah, there's going to be today. quite a few coming. Because I saw... I saw Laurie yesterday and obviously talked to her. Oh, bless her. Is she okay? Yeah, she's all good. She's, she's just coming, I think. Oh, there she is. Yay! There you go. Yeah, there she is. Hello, imagine her speaking. She said she's going to try and watch sneaking at work, like. Yeah, I'm naughty. <laughs> but yeah. Just my dog. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. The kind of, I've been asking everyone the same first question, so I'm going to ask you it as well. How did you first get into acting? Oh, gosh. mine. I'm pretty sure there are much more interesting answers than mine. Uh, I was just born this way. No, you can say that. Uh, yeah, there, there, there really isn't any other explanation. I think it's like a disease. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I definitely was born with it. That and asthma. Uh, and I haven't outgrown yeah. either. So uh, here we are. <laughs> Amazing. What was the kind of first role that you did on stage, whether it be at school level or beyond? The first one I remember uh, was Mary in mm -hmm. uh in the nativity it's also the first time i ever got a note uh, i i, I dis distinctly remember being told by my teacher jenna mary wouldn't drag joseph and the donkey uh around the stage is what she said and i remember it and i also remember thinking oh but he's so slow he was my boyfriend david potts his name was she's been really slow so mm -hmm. yeah i was marching on heavily pregnant um <laughs> but yeah that's the first one i remember but there is a photo of me from the year before um, as an angel, when I was—I mean, I'm like four and five, so. Yeah. Amazing. I only got only got Roman soldier when I was in the Timothy. Really oh, see, I, I I progressed through it. I definitely was. There's definitely some kind of. There was a person sat at the side reading the nativity and I remember I we got photographs of me being one of the children who sit and watch, and then you kind of progress to being in the angel choir, um, and then I just remember being Mary. And that, and that was kind yeah. of it, really. I got told off for waving at my mum mm -hmm. as well. I was like six, mm -hmm. you know, but what can you do? <laughs> yeah, another dog. Go on. Um, how have you kind of found, obviously, lockdown? I mean, it's not been fun for anyone, but how have you been coping? No, no it's not been fun. Um, I'm, well, at first, it, I mean, like everybody, at first it was really, really tough. Mm. Um, you kind of get used to it. You kind of get in the swing of things, you know. Work? What's that? I don't do that. I don't yeah. do that anymore, apparently. Um, also, I, um, I live in, in a flat with no garden. So the first mm. few weeks, because it was very warm, was particularly yeah. horrendous. And my neighbours, um, who do have a garden, uh, literally every day we're at sunbathing. And honestly, I was standing, staring at my bedroom window like, oh, hey. mm. like. however, uh, plan B came into effect and yeah. uh yeah. oh thank you say Giorgio thank you um I there was a window in in my hallway which le led out onto a flat roof and it was a mm. window that was designed not to open I've had that changed so and I said oh it's for a fire escape in case downstairs has a fire yeah that's where yeah. I've been so Genius. lockdown has got infinitely better for me genius that's that's creativity see that's my middle name mm. amazing and obviously, going on to come away, which nobody knew you were in it. <laughs> I live there, award winning show, but I didn't know. But yeah, how did like, it come about from you getting the audition? You getting well, the role? I, I mean, I just not got Les Mis. Uh, I mean, and I mean, just, I mean, like days before I had been in the final for Les Mis and not got it, and uh, sort of lying on my sofa eating that, you know, that. Um, biscotti paste oh, you know yeah, that yeah. Oh, that yeah. gorgeous stuff eating out the jar uh, crying uh, as you do and my agent's like um 
she'd said, you get 24 hours to cry over this and then you're done. And then she called me and she said, you've got an audition. And I remember trying to say it to my husband. I was like, something like far from a way from home, come away, fly away home yeah. or something. Something about homes and home and away. He was yeah. like, home and away, the musical. I was like, it's definitely not that. No, no. Definitely not that. But um, apparently, because I'm a bit rubbish, I have to be honest at keeping up to date with new and good stuff. Um, yeah. And I hold my hand up and I always have been. I'm always late to the party and all the songs that I sing are quite retro that, you know, sort of 20 years old now. Um, but I said, yeah, it, it's like, I think it's on, it's on Broadway or something. It's apparently quite popular. Apparently quite popular. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I, I went in, sang, uh, they asked, right? It's funny because they are, <laughs> Laura, it's my dad calls it that, what, home and away. Um, they yeah. wanted, uh, they ask people to sing pop or folk songs. Now look, I'm just gonna say it how it is. I've got one pop song, which I try and mm -hmm. sing in whatever style they ask for, if it's not musical theater. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. like blues, jazz, uh, pop, rock. I just try and make this song work. Um, partly lazy and also partly because I'm not, I'm not really a pop singer. So it's, it's tricky yeah. for me. Um, anyway, I took that, offered it up and they were like, Ian was like, do you have anything else? And now I know the show. I'm like, so inappropriate. It was, nobody does it better. The Bond song. Not appropriate. Oh, yeah. um, and he asked, I was like, yeah, I showed him my folder because I always take one. Graduates, take a folder full of stuff that you know. It's always handy. Um, and I sang Meadowlark, which is, he picked that, which is my favourite song. I was yeah. like, yes. Took it from the middle bit because it's a little long, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I got a recall and they sent me some stuff. I got another recall where they gave me more stuff. And at that point, I thought I was up for a standby, thrilled. I mean, literally thrilled. Because mm. uh, I auditioned for Bonnie, Diane and Beulah. Um, I thought, great, you know, that'll be fantastic. Um, yeah. And then I, d I knew nothing about Beulah, I have to say. I only had the joke. So I had a lot more Bonnie material than I did Beulah material. A lot more Diane material, obviously. You know, Bonnie has, in my opinion, like the best lines in the show she's the best scenes in the whole show and i it's a dream to sit and watch mary do those every night uh, a dream and then diane uh she has that great song um and then Beulah's just like it's just like a weird joke and she's old I, in the mm. breakdown the character was put it was um bonnie was like 30s to 40s diane was 40s to 50s and Beulah was like 50s to 60s and i was like ah Mm. So, mm. totally thought, mm. you know, I can span those three. Well, I was like, where? Could not believe it. Cried in Prezzo. The people in the next table obviously thought someone had died. Then yeah. I had to call my agent back and check I had not misheard. It's like, mm. you serious? I actually got a part. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't mm. believe it. I mean, they made us wait nine weeks, but. Yeah, well, typical. You do. So that was it. Beginning to end. Amazing. And I guess it's kind of one, quite one of them unique shows where you're playing a character that's inspired by a real person. And obviously, you've been able to meet those people. So I guess that's kind of... Oh, it's amazing meeting them. Yeah. The thing, well, amazing, obviously, sidebar, but yeah. also really hard. Yeah. The reason that they're made out to be that way is because they just are that way. It's not, it's not in any way for show. It's not in any way you know, for dramatic effect. I mean, for example, my character is based on two women. One is Beulah Cooper, where Beulah comes from, and the other one is Diane Davis, where the Davis bit comes from. And on our opening night when we were at the Abbey, she was talking to Clive, who was our original cast, Claude. And he, he was retelling really me the story. He said, uh, so I'm in the middle of a conversation with her and she went, oh, I'm so sorry. Could you give me two seconds? I've got to go and call home because the day that she, I think it was either the day before or the day that she left to come to Ireland, a Syrian... Yeah. Put them in our house and then gone, you'll be all right. I'm going to Ireland. You'll be fine. Help yourself. That's the kind of people that they are. Yeah. 
So it's, it's quite humbling. Amazing. I guess that, does that kind of, did that change after, did you meet them before you played the character or was it you'd already started? We'd already mm-hmm. started. But yeah. it, people ask that quite often, does it, you know, impact how you play it? Well, it yeah. can't yeah. purely because I'm playing two, essentially two yeah. people. It's two yeah. people's stories that I'm trying to tell. The only difference I think, and it's not really a difference, it was just something I was mindful of. Um, I was doing an interview with Diane Davis before we opened in London, and she retold the moment that she saw the first lot of playing people seeing what happened on the TV. Yeah. And it's not that it made a difference how I played it, but it's certainly, I can just remember how she described it and the look on her face and the pain that she felt on seeing them see that. Yeah, yeah. to know so um yeah that's the only thing that after the fact that i went mm-hmm. mm, i'll just you know store that up there and use that amazing i guess kind of it's, it's one of them shows which it's gonna be obviously so important when it comes back because obviously the message of it and i guess that kind of that's always gonna be even more so important now absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. the, just before we close the last couple of shows um the uh, toilet roll line, if you haven't seen the show, this will mean nothing to you. No. If you have, if you know, you know. The toilet roll line got the biggest laugh I've ever heard, ever. No. Uh, it, like roaring with laughter, both times, both the first and the second one. Um, I remember the first time hearing it going, why the, oh yes, of course. Because no. that was round about the time everyone was like fighting and rising oh, over yeah. toilet roll. Yeah, so yeah. that, yeah, I think it's good. I guess like you'd only just, you'd only just open with the um, new company, haven't you? Five five weeks, bless them, yeah. they've been on. Which is crazy. Although, when we do go back, please God, everyone touch wood. Everybody do it right now. Yeah. Touch wood. We'll be back. Um, we will get a... That's true. Yeah, I always find that the rehearsal period is so important for a cast to bond and to find our stories together. Um, yeah. And when you are in, you know, second or third, com- when you're part of a new company coming into running the other one, that just takes a little bit of time. You end up doing quite a bit of your rehearsal or play or discovery in front of an audience, which yeah. is totally fine because these guys are, I mean, they were well ahead of us. Even when they started, they were on it. We were yeah. still a little bit like deer in the headlights for a long time. But we as a company we're sort of finding our rhythms together now we're going to get the opportunity to do a full rehearsal period and for that i'm i'm, I'm i feel quite lucky you yeah. know you've got to take the positives when i can so i do i feel quite grateful that we'll get that david shut up there you go <laughs> shut up. Right. i guess the reaction every night i mean i've only seen it four times i think but every time that reaction just blows me away every time I know it's, it deserves it, but it must be even spend more special when you're on the stage. Shut up. Like, shut up. Um, <laughs> it's incredible. And, like, you never, you never get to the point where you're like, yeah, yeah. we just get, the people just scream. Um, because it's always, it, it, it's always so guttural from them and it's always so heartfelt and so it, it was it's almost like they have to do it and you really feel that from them um so you never get over that and it always takes your breath away yeah. um i feel quite lucky but i have to say it's got little to do with the people on the stage and everything to do with the real life people oh, yeah, yeah. who create who, who are the reason the story exists mm. the writing the direction i said to cat in rehearsals once uh, who plays hannah i was like this show makes us look really talented <laughs> Because it's, trust me, it's the show is the star. And we're kind of like, you know, the pawns that move it around. So, yeah, regardless of who is up, then that's the other thing. That's why you can never be like, yeah, because it's not for you. It's, no, it's for the story. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's when it all goes dark at the end and we all bounce. Yes, it's very yeah. true. Yeah. I remember one Friday night, almost hearing the audience, like you hit that last note, the button, and da 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 
and they all you sort of felt like a an intake of breath like a weird scream and then the applause and it was like whoa mm -hmm. it just takes your breath away amazing has it has the show changed your opinion on chairs that's the big question because <laughs> In rehearsals, I genuinely thought if I if I if I never see a chair again, we'll yeah. never soon. I said as well that I used to say that we you know our um, our uh, company, our producers, were like this is uh, an ensemble of principles. I'm like yes, and we are the chorus that carry them round. Yeah. The principles are the chairs and the tables. <laughs> Let's say the principles are the chairs. The tables are featured ensemble, and we're definitely very much back line of the chorus, just carting yeah. those things around. That's how it felt yeah. in the Dave's first preview <laughs> in Dublin. I know he's talking about the reaction from the audience. Absolutely mental. And same yeah. when we got to London. But yeah, those damn chairs. Good Lord, heaven above. And they only have to be out by like that much for it to yeah. cause panic and pandemonium. And watching people like this looking at trying to be really pretending to be into the scene and going this chair's in the wrong place trying to be really subtle like shuffling around it's funny oh, I'm just things that come in. yeah what would be your favorite part of the show in general it's a lame question uh, but I'm asking it. my favorite part of the show from the moment i heard it on the soundtrack to the very last performance that we did of it is will always be somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I think it's absolutely theatre gold. The moment yeah. where, um, again, if you haven't seen the show, if you haven't seen the show, when you come and see it, you'll know the bit I'm talking about. It's in the yeah. last plane and we're all very, very excited because we're going home and then we just take this moment to think about everything that's been, everything that's ha that, that's going to be, the euphoria and the excitement of being, of seeing your families again. And it goes from being very loud and very energetic to being incredibly intimate and charged and it's the point where the revolve moves around and it is absolutely hands down my favorite moment in the show and it always has been I, the first time I heard the soundtrack was the day after I found out I got the job mm -hmm. and I was driving home from doing a play in uh I was going to say Chichester but I'd be lying to you it's Salisbury driving home from Salisbury and I thought I'm gonna have to pull over because you have to stop crying because you're gonna kill yourself in the M25. Like, yeah. <laughs> genuinely makes just absolutely gets me right in the solar plexus every time. Amazing. Oh does it? So I'm saying the choreography look on that looks amazing especially from the circle. Well do you know what I'm very excited to get back to uh, learn what that choreography is <laughs> because because it's very, very apparent that I have no recollection of what I do for most of this show. Yeah. David Shannon, if you're still there, do you remember any of it? Because I do not. <laughs> but that's the problem when you've had, you've had this kind of yeah. forced it break. Was part of, I think it's part of being in this business that your brain yeah. goes, oh, I'm done. Yeah. And you're trying to convince your brain, no, it's not, it's not like the normal leave a job thing. You, you really have to retain yeah. some of this information. <laughs> Dave's like, nah, none yeah. of it. Yeah. No, yeah. me neither. Me neither. Not a clue. Not a clue. I had um, I had uh, Emma Salvo and Jen Tierney. Um, I met up with them uh, last week. It was uh, Jen had some of my stuff that she needed to give back to me, and I was trying to tell her about. I was telling the both. We were just talking about the stuff that had gone on. I was trying to say there's this one point where I'm sat on a table. I was like, I have no idea what scene that is or why I'm sat there, and I don't even now. I'm like, was I ever sat what? on a table downstage? Right? No clue. No clue. Sorry. Yeah. After I left. So did the choreography from my <laughs> Was it ever in your brain, David? No, that's unfair. David nailed it. We miss mm. him. Also, I'm going to ask about um, Wind in the Willows. Because obviously that's oh. a such a good, good, such a good show. Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Obviously, people can watch it now, can't they? Because it's streamable. Of course they can. It's on a, a friend of mine um, has got... Well, actually, I mean not long story it's my mum's best friend's grandkids are yeah. obsessed with it and i got a picture on facebook of them watching it outside on a huge um oh what projector screen i was like good grief that is a big headshot right there yeah. but yeah it's nice it's really nice that um people have been able to watch it during lockdown i think yeah it's only kind of such a fun family show as well i mean most yeah, of it's been so. put out it's not been kind of family theater i don't think it's probably no, and also I think, it's, I think it's filmed so beautifully. 
Yeah. I think that the filming of it absolutely, um, you know, lived up, lived up to, to the experience of seeing it on stage. I mean, not quite because live is always best, but you know, you yeah. really got the sense of, of the fun elements of the show. And I think it really showed off the design, which I thought, I always thought was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Costumes and everything. Oh, Amazing. the costumes and the set, just beautiful. Do you have any mishaps in any show you've been in that you can actually talk about? Without getting yourself in trouble. Uh, let me think. Um, okay, the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me on stage ever happened at Leicester Curve. Oh. It was, I can't think what year it was. It was a while ago. Let's just say that. Uh, like, <laughs> like, uh, like, like, two thousand and seven, something like that, uh, and it was the very final scene. I was playing one of the Ugly Sisters. It was Cinderella, and the very uh, I, my very dear friend Emma Jane Appleyard. Uh, just to give you a bit of context, she played Ula in um, Ula. That's it, Una, Ula, in Producers. So now you know what she looks like. We were playing the Ugly mm -hmm. Sisters, and uh, beautiful Savannah was playing um, Cinderella. And it wasn't, it was a new version of the show. Uh, so at the end, Cinderella a bit, had a bit of sass and a bit of spunk about her. She ended up taking on the Ugly Sisters in a fight. And um, the fact that she, she punched me in the face, really punched me in the face twice is a totally other story. I mean, like, literally up to yeah. here. Anyway, this particular night, I, uh, she punched me in the face and I'm gonna get up and she's gonna grab me by the hair and she's gonna drag me down stage. And as I got up, it happened very, very, very quickly. But I remember it was a thought in my head, very clear thought going, what is that breeze on the back of your thighs? Yeah. And I just thought, I'd just give a little, you know, precautionary look down. And my trousers, they were pajama pants. And because I was wearing yeah. dance tights, which are quite thick, I hadn't noticed, had fallen down completely to the floor in a pool around my ankles, so much so that I could have just stepped out of them and carried on. Yeah. And the shock, I just was like, oh my God. I yeah. couldn't believe that they had fallen down on stage. And she grabbed my wig to pull me down. I said, Cinderella, you'll have to give me a moment to regain my dignity. And okay. I had to bend down and pull up my own trousers. It was mortifying. And everyone in the wings had watched them yeah. shuffle down. Because apparently they went down quite slowly as well. They really, really made a meal of yeah. the fact that I was yeah. about to be utterly shamed. And I think I had... I mean, I was laughing, but kind of like, <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> I had a mini panic attack. And there was a critic in that night who said, sadly, it was the funniest thing that had happened all night and it was probably unintentional. But yeah, uh, that's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me on stage. Hey, Nat. Amazing, Amazing yeah, because obviously you going to ask about Tim Shindrella, because it was the um, first show at the Curve, wasn't it? The, it it big, was, it was. I, I had the best time. Met some yeah. utterly brilliant people doing that job. I loved it, absolutely loved it. Apologise, my dog's about to stop barking. <laughs> all good, it's all good. Kind of the, the question I've been using to wrap up this, these ones, <coughs> the same question, is what's the best piece of advice you'd give to anyone that wanted to get into acting, show business? Don't do it. Do something else. Stay well clean. Um, and ha if you cannot, if like me, you were born with a hideous, okay. hideous, hideous disease that called show business and you can't shake it, um, there's no advice really, because I think a lot, ha, ha, David Shannon, less booze. Listen, right, I need, I just need to talk about that. People who have a lot of alcohol in their house, have a lot of alcohol in their house because they don't really drink. Now, everyone yeah. who knows me knows I'm not a drinker, but certainly for the first couple of months of lockdown, I did a really good impression of one. But, and then I got into this whole cocktail thing, so I'm kind of growing oh. at my cocktail bar. That's basically, uh, I mean, you do, Shannon. Um, uh, so basically, yeah, that's the, that's what all the booze is. I do, I look like a lush. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, advice to people who, who like the rest of us idiots have no choice. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of it's luck. Work hard. Do you know what I mean? Hone your skill. Uh, enjoy it. People ask me, you know, what do you sing? What, what, what songs do I sing in audition? Sing something you love. Do the things that you love, because a lot of the time you'll have to take jobs that you may not like or may not want to do. And that's part of that's just part of the, the deal, really. But while you're training, and while you want to get into it, do as much different stuff. Figure out what it is that you like to do. Figure out what it is that 
you're trying to sell as in like your own personal brand and who you are and uh just you, just really love yourself a bit because there's so many yeah. people out there who will hate you give yourself a fighting chance of having one person who's your yeah. champion yeah. Believe, yeah. That you can do it. believe that you can that's probably the best advice i give because the rest of it's just pure luck yeah beautiful that wraps up brilliantly yeah glorious so, well, thank you for your time this afternoon my absolute pleasure my love i'm uh, i'm thrilled to have been here and lovely and shattered it's really nice to yeah. chat to you i'm actually gonna get off this and give him a little text now as well um and all the people that came and said hello it's really nice to see you all Amazing. oh i'm not i miss you too i really do mm. right Amazing. i will oh stop it you'll make me cry yeah, all of you. All right i'll let you yeah, go because we'll... you'll have someone else lined up straight after me so good luck my darling <laughs> Cool, thank you. Have a good afternoon. See you soon. You too, sweetheart. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 bye.